I'm Mark Golub, and in the news, the growing national controversy relating to how the United States of America should A, respond to the Syrian refugee crisis, and B, in the wake of the jihadist massacres in Paris in January at Charlie Hebdo and Kosher Supermarket, and then again last month at multiple sites in the French capital, and of course in the aftermath of the murder of 14 Americans in San Bernardino, California. There's an emerging debate over whether American immigration policy should be modified with respect to permitting Muslims into this country. This debate has become more volatile as candidates vying for the presidential nomination in the Republican Party have spoken out strongly in offering their suggestions for limiting Muslim entry into America. Donald Trump ignited the largest firestorm by suggesting that all Muslims should be denied entry into the United States until Congress can determine how to best protect the American people from jihadist attacks. Mr. Trump has since qualified that statement, saying that he would exempt Muslim American citizens returning from a trip abroad, and would also exempt any Muslim who is serving in the armed forces overseas. But Mr. Trump's comments have evoked passionate condemnation from major Jewish organizations. The, Jewish, uh, the American Jewish Committee sent out an email blast under the title, AJC decries call to ban Muslims from entering the United States, and leads that piece by saying, AJC condemned in the strongest terms the latest offensive and inflammatory comments from Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump, who today suggested that all Muslims should be banned from entering the United States. And another email blast came from the Religious Action Center in Washington, D.C., with the headline, Reform Movement Condemns Donald Trump's Comments on Muslim Entry into U.S., Calling Mr. Trump's Suggestion Religious Bigotry. Of course, the Jewish people have experienced religious discrimination, persecution, death throughout our history, and the painful memories of the world's denying Jews a safe haven during the Holocaust, including the United States under the Roosevelt administration, is still a searing wound in the Jewish psyche. And I would think that most Americans are at least, at least, uncomfortable by any suggestion that all Muslims should be turned into the enemy, especially American Muslims who are part of mainstream American life. My sense is that American Jews and all Americans remain totally committed to being part of a country symbolized by the lady in the harbor, providing a safe haven to all the oppressed and downtrodden of the world, yearning to be free. There are, however, thoughtful, sensitive Jews and Americans who question whether it is fair and honest to draw an analogy between the Jews facing genocide in Nazi Europe and the Syrians now fleeing war-torn Syria. And some of the most serious questions are being raised by Israeli scholars. And one highly respected Israeli voice, who is simply asking questions relating to Syrian refugees, is Ambassador Yoram Ettinger, an expert in U.S.-Israeli relations and Mideast politics, who publishes the online Ettinger Report and served as a minister for congressional affairs at Israel's embassy in Washington, and has also served as Israel's Consul General in Houston, Texas, and as Director of Israel's Government Press Office. And Yoram joins us on our JBS phones from Israel right now. And Yoram, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you. It's my privilege. Yoram, first, what's your response to Donald Trump's suggestion that aside from Muslims who are U.S. citizens, there should be a sort of moratorium on the United States accepting any Muslim immigrants? Well, uh, it seems to me that uh, the most important challenge for the U.S. right now is first 
to study the European precedent and rather than repeat the European mistakes as far as handling uh, Muslim immigration, uh, try to avoid those uh, mistakes. What is the single most grievous mistake you think Europe has made in relationship to its Muslim immigration policy? What mistake did Europe make? Well, namely to uh, evaluate and study what uh, does it mean uh, emigration from Arab countries uh, in uh, Islamic context, not in the Western context. Uh, for instance, uh, while people are talking, and rightly so, about the fact that uh, most Muslims are not terrorists, and certainly most Muslims are not terrorists, uh, has the West in general entertained the idea that majority uh, does not count as of yet in Muslim uh, countries. We don't have a single, a single Arab country, a single Muslim country, uh, other than, U than Turkey, uh, for instance, uh, that uh, where we see uh, that majority uh, rules. Uh, we have, on the other hand, a streak of 1,400 years where it has been uh, a series of rogue regimes controlling, ruling, repressing the majority. And the same thing applies to the emigration phenomena, uh, because while most emigrants uh, are not terrorists, but uh, rogue elements, rogue organizations, rogue regimes do control most of those immigrants, and they consider those immigrants to be a Muslim Trojan uh, horse. Mm -hmm. At the same time, when Westerners, and probably rightly so from Western point of view, consider those immigrants to be uh, for people who yearn for freedom. Mm -hmm. The question is, that what matters most? That what the West would like immigrants to be, or that which the Muslim rogue uh, regimes, rogue uh, organizations, uh, coerce them to, uh, to be. Moreover, when we talk about immigration uh, in the Muslim context, we have to realize that Muslim folks, by and large, by and large, uh, hold in high regard uh, Islamic history, and especially, and especially, major, major uh, 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 actions by or cornerstones involving the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Yes, and in that context, the issue of emigration as referred to by Muslim, the Hijra, refers to uh, Muslim-driven uh, migration. And that takes after Muhammad's own emigration from Mecca to Medina, where he did not want to be integrated. He did not intend to blend. He acted very intensely and eventually successfully into taking over Medina and leveraging it to take over Mecca, take over much of the Middle East and also few parts of, uh, of Europe. It seems to me that that type of context should be discussed, should be at least uh, acquainted by Western policymakers before they make up their mind as far as uh, the proper uh, moral, political, homeland security policy of uh, migration. Okay, Yoram, you raise such interesting issues. I want you for one moment to put yourself into an American context, an American Jewish context. I want you to imagine that I've brought you to some you know, mainstream synagogue somewhere in the United States, whether it's New York, California, Chicago, Florida, it doesn't matter where, Boston, it doesn't matter. We're at a mainstream 
uh, American synagogue, and you're facing a large Jewish audience who have grown up with certain notions of what it means to not only be a Jew, but how the Jew is to treat every other human being that ultimately everybody has created, quote, in the image of God, the symbolism and the poetry of the Jewish tradition, which really has a tremendous hold on the Jewish perspective, and that ultimately we want to treat others as, you know, we wish we had been treated during the Holocaust. And what you're saying, on the one hand, makes enormous sense, and you're, you're, you're simply cautioning any Western society to understand that the Muslim community, especially coming out of Syria, has a perspective which may not be certainly um, Western to begin with. It may not even be compatible with the Western ideology. But you now have to imagine yourself facing, you know, 500 American Jews in a room. It sounds as if you're saying that the Muslim does not have the same ability, the same kind of even integrity that the Jew should extend or the American people or Western, whether it's France, whether it's England, whether it's the United States, that somehow we have to understand that these human beings are of a different intellectual or emotional or psychic nature. It sounds, Yoram, as if you're being on the edges somewhat racist, intolerant, and I can imagine many Americans and many American Jews would hear what you're saying, and even if they understand the problem you describe, they don't know how to deal with it in the context of being liberal, open, extending freedom, and creating against an American haven for anybody who is oppressed. I want you to tell me, if I had brought you to this synagogue, somewhere in America, and there are 500 people with bated breath, they want wisdom from you. How would you explain to us the subtlety of what you're trying to say, while at the same time being honest to the finest of Jewish values and American Western principles? Well, uh, it, it seems to me that everything which I say has nothing to do with... Uh, racism on one hand or liberalism on the other hand it has it had to do with realism uh, realism uh, and especially now I would say homeland security driven realism for instance uh, uh, everything which I said would apply also uh, to uh, licensing uh, doctors uh, obviously, every person should have equal opportunity to become a doctor. And my assumption is, my assumption is that uh, if a certain person uh, has a track record of violating every principle of uh, the medical profession, has a track record of abusing uh, patients, uh, molesting uh, children. Uh, uh, women, uh, elderly people, etc., uh, my assumption is that you will not uh, be able to uh, issue uh, a license for a doctor with such a track record uh, anywhere in the U.S. or anywhere in the, in the Western world. In Israel, for instance, unlike the U.S., uh, you need to be licensed in order to carry a gun. Uh, I carry uh, uh, nine millimeter Smith Wesson. I carry it because I proved to the authorities in Israel that first of all I'm uh, clean as far as uh, no criminal track uh, track record. I'm clean as far as usage of uh, drugs or whatever, and my uh, profession requires me to spend much time in Judea, Samaria, where it's advisable to, uh, to carry a, a gun. Uh, if you cannot prove it, you simply don't get it. Mm -hmm. And the same mm -hmm. thing applies 
to immigration, for Jews to assume that uh, anything which I said uh, uh, means that uh, Jews also may not uh, get a uh, permit to emigrate is simply uh, blindness, complete misunderstanding, and falling into the trap of rogue regimes who are leveraging the gullibility of uh, Western so-called morality. Uh, because certainly uh, Jews who applied for visa, or I would say most people today who apply for visa to the U.S., do not study in their school uh, what every single Muslim school teaches. By the way, in the U.S., in Europe, certainly in, uh, in Muslim countries, for instance, the fundamentals of uh, Islam, that the fidel, the, the Muslim should never, should never submit himself to the laws of the infidel. That the infidel American, in fact, to refer to the arrogant infidel American, must accept the laws of Sharia, maybe not in the short run, but in the long run. They study in their uh, school, and, and this is not, by the way, radical Islam. I'm talking about Muslim uh, schools. They study that uh, holy war, uh, jihad, must be conducted on behalf of uh, Islam. Uh, they study that the abode of Islam, the abode of the believers, must be expanded into the abode of the infidel, not only militarily, but also through migration. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, mm -hmm. and I firmly believe in that, that the vast, vast majority of Muslim migrants do not intend to be used as Muslim Trojan horse. But again, show me one uh, Arab country, one Muslim uh, country, where majority counts. If majority would count in Muslim countries, we would not have the phenomena of global Islamic terrorism. And the question now is, are our Western countries, Western societies, going to uh, subordinate uh, rea reality on the altar of uh, uh, political correctness, of, uh, of uh, momentary or uh, short-term convenience, or are we going to subordinate our, uh, our natural tendencies to the constraints of reality? And going back to the mistakes of Europe, uh, 30 years ago, when I spoke the same way, exactly the same way, mm -hmm. with some mm -hmm. French people, I was accused of Islamophobia. Yes. I assume that fewer, fewer French people would accuse me of Islamophobia following their recent experience, and in my mind, we ain't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. uh, San Bernardino, I think it's, uh, uh, it's not the, the, the worst thing. Uh, unless, unless proper steps will be uh, taken to preempt uh, the assault of Islam on Western societies. Some of that assault is done through terrorism and firearms. Some of the assault is done through diplomacy. And some of the assault is done through, uh, through migration. And uh, as of now, the, the, the clear, lucid, piercing, uh, bloody writing on the wall is there. The yes. question is, yeah. are we going to read it properly, or due to political correctness, are we going to ignore it and then, unfortunately, suffer the devastating consequences? So, Yoram, does this mean, in essence, you are not critical of Donald Trump's statement? I'm not really uh, familiar with exactly what he said. Uh, quite frankly, I have my doubts whether Donald Trump, whatever he said, uh, has been a result of studying uh, what is Islam all about, how relevant is Islamic history to contemporary uh, Islam. 
and and therefore I, I don't want to refer okay. to Donald Trump okay, or to any enough. other candidate. I'm I'm referring to again the European reality, mm -hmm. uh, the American reality, but most importantly to Islamic reality. If we if we uh, uh, examine Islam of the last 14 centuries, uh, we can see litany of examples where uh, Islamic uh, terrorists uh, leveraged, leveraged Muslim communities, by the way, mostly in Muslim countries, in order, in order to stab the back of their Muslim uh, host. Uh, we had that experience uh, with the Palestinians. The Palestinians were hosted lavishly to the tune of a few million Palestinians by the Hashemite regime in Jordan, but by 1970, they tried to leverage that hospitality and topple the Hashemite uh, regime. They were expelled from uh, Jordan, or the leadership was expelled from Jordan to uh, Lebanon, and after furies in Lebanon, they have they made attempts to leverage the few hundred thousand Palestinians in Lebanon in order to topple the regime in uh, Beirut. Kuwait opened its arms to the Palestinians since the initial expulsion of the Palestinian terrorist leadership, Arafat, Mahmoud Abbas, and their friends from Egypt in the mid-1950s. 300,000 Palestinians were allowed into Kuwait, mostly uh, allies, relatives uh, of uh, Mahmoud Abbas and Arafat. By 1990, they collaborated with Saddam Hussein, trying to topple the regime in Kuwait by leveraging the presence of the Palestinians in, uh, in Kuwait. And in my mind, exactly the same uh, exercise is being followed right now uh, in uh, Israel, where I think a gullible Israeli government allowed the migration of 70,000 PLO terrorists back in 1993, and they are now based in uh, Ramallah, in uh, some parts of Judea and Samaria, and in Gaza. Uh, intensifying terrorism against the Jewish state in an attempt to end not the occupation, as they call it, of 1967, but the occupation, as they refer to it, of 1948. And again, uh, should the U.S. study those precedents or should the U.S. ignore those precedents? I think that people who do not study the past uh, are doomed uh, in the future. I understand. Yoram, I want the bottom line for you. Bottom line, what should American policy be regarding the immigration into America of Syrian refugees and the Muslim community at this point in time? What, well, you know, I, if you... I, I think that the, the, primary, the primary challenge is to uh, stop uh, chasing the terrorist mosquitoes and drain the terrorist swamp. And I refer to Muslim schools in the U.S., in Europe, and, by the way, uh, in the Palestinian uh, Authority. Those Muslim schools are the most effective production line of terrorists. As long as we allow those Muslim uh, schools to operate on American ground, European uh, ground, uh, in the Palestinian Authority and other places in the world, we are going to have more and more terrorists uh, coming at, uh, at us. The other uh, challenge, obviously, is to make sure uh, that uh, every single uh, migrant from suspect environments, and uh, the fact is that most terrorism emanates from Muslim countries. The fact is that most terrorist organizations are indeed Muslims, and therefore, and therefore, uh, they have to be scrutinized. And I hope that the U.S. does devise the proper methodology to scrutinize uh, 
uh, those uh, migrants, I will say a word, which uh, security agencies uh, tragically do not want to hear, and that is profiling. I think it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing when flying domestically in the U.S., that uh, flying from uh, Washington, D.C. to Casper, Wyoming, you see an elderly lady, probably 85 or so uh, year old, hardly walking, uh, being searched because the computer ordered the service, the security person yeah. to search her yeah. while, while um, um, uh, Arab-looking, Muslim-looking person walks uh, freely without being uh, searched. It seems to me that proper scrutiny, professional scrutiny, and responsible responsible scrutiny for the sake of Americans requires also profiling. And this has nothing to do with human rights. It has to do, in fact, with protecting human rights, with bolstering homeland security, but with following common sense rather than wishful thinking type of practice. Yoram, Yoram Ettinger, you make a very compelling case. You do not speak at the moment the way we normally hear American politicians, and certainly most American Jewish leaders are not speaking the way you're speaking. You, you raise issues that cause us to think. It is so wonderful to have you on. I hope you'll let me call you again, and we'll Absolutely. continue the conversation. But I, Yoram, I thank you very, very much for the time. Thank you, and uh, happy Hanukkah to you and all the listeners. And happy Hanukkah to you. Chag Sameh. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. The thoughts of Yoram Ettinger, who again publishes the Ettinger Report online. Uh, and uh, as I said, on the one hand, there's an emotional, visceral reaction that I think most American Jews have, that we want to be as opening, open and embracing as we possibly can be. But there are real issues here, intellectual issues, emotional issues, issues that deserve real attention. And I would say, you know, the Jews of Nazi Germany had no ill will toward America or the American system. To the contrary, they viewed America as a bastion of Western freedom. They yearned to be part of the American democratic system. And one has to be concerned whether this is the mindset of Syrian refugees. And one has to feel a certain empathy for women and children who are fleeing a war zone. But to pretend that the Syrian refugees are equivalent to the refugees, you know, the Jewish refugees of World War II, it just means one is not being realistic and honest in one's assessment. And what you hear is here, um, so questions being raised, and I hope that over the next period of time we'll have other people on JBS who can help us think through the issue. And, you know, maybe some of you have already decided one way or the other, but if you're still viewing this with an open mind, Yoram Ettinger certainly raises questions that are worthy of our consideration. As always, my thanks to Sloan Copeland, our director, to Serge, Gold, uh, Serge Goldberg, uh, program coordinator, to JBS's Associate Director Dara Golub and to the producer of this edition of In the News, Carol Lilienthal. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.